Riku throws her flash bomb. <laughs> she goes, cover your eyes! Throws the flash bomb and Seymour's just like staring right at it. Just, where is that? I know. <laughs> and then it right. flashes right in it's its like face. <laughs> the warning to the party somehow doesn't serve as a warning to the people who I are going to get... She shouts it too. She shouts hey, it Hey, cover your eyes. Only my guys, everyone else look at it. <laughs> it's like eyes peeled. Just like right there. I love it. It's so perfect. Hi everyone, welcome back to the State of the Arc podcast. My name's Mike. My name's Kason. This is episode 11, 11 of our Final Fantasy X analysis. Good. We're on the, uh, we're on the down, downhill <coughs> portion now. We're, we're coming down the other side towards the end of the game. We've got yes. most of our setups done. Now it's time to make reveals and payoffs. Yes, and, yes, yes. You know, start like, Moving with there, momentum there's towards the there, end. <laughs> reveals, reveals and payoffs is what's happening this whole episode. Yep. <clears throat> so the way I've been blocking this out, it, it seems to me that we can finish probably three more episodes after today. Maybe four tops. Yeah. But I think we'll be able to get through right around there. So it's not going to end up being quite as long. Not as, as long as Xenogus. Not as long. Not as many arrival, episodes. Arrival to it. Yeah. Um, let's see. We left off. Uh, as they got onto the airship in uh, Bicanel, right? And they were escaping yes. and home got destroyed. Yep. And uh, did we talk about, we talked about Donna a little bit. Yeah, yeah, like you, you brought it up. Pilgrimage. Yep, yep. Um, I think Isaru is also on that airship with us. He escapes. We talked to Rin. So there's some NPCs to talk to. Okay, so we've done all that, I think. And now yeah. they're going to, um, to Bavel to try to get you yeah. back, who was taken uh, by I think someone. we stopped yeah. around the the attack. From when the, the dragon attacks, yeah, yeah. right? The dragon shows up. Yes. So, um, they find out, using that Sphere Ocelo finder, that Yun is being held by Seymour at the palace of St. Bavel, which I think also doubles as the temple in Bavel. I believe so. Yeah, yeah the temple is right there, yep. <clears throat> so, uh, she's going to be forced to marry him they all kind of see that in the sphere or whatever. Right? Yep. Um, so they set a course to Bavel, full speed ahead. Um, and then as you're going, there is a monster that is like the guardian, I guess, or the sentinel. Uh, so it just kind of flies city. around the city, I guess, and mm -hmm. just, yeah, yeah. It's called the Guardian Worm, spelled W-Y-R-M, Worm, mm. Evre. Evre. It's yeah. a great sacred beast, the protector of Bavel. Um, so you have to like go out like onto the deck of the airship yeah, and fight yeah, and this fight thing it up there. there. It's pretty cool. Fun. It's cool when it, when you kind of first see it and it's like riding right next to the yeah to the ship, the giant wings. Yeah, there's like oh crap, what's that? And then I think Lulu is the one who explains what it is. Um, anyway, so you fight and defeat that thing, and then you're coming yeah. into Bavel itself, kind of like dis I think the ship is damaged actually. So yeah, it's there's like, like black smoke flying by. It's yeah. like descending right into Bavel. Yep. And there's a really cool sort of action sequence as yeah. the party like jumps out onto these wires that yeah, were shot Yeah, they down. shoot these harpoons and then they kind of ride them down, <laughs> yeah, but they're, they're on like, their feet. They're like uh, Legolas style. It's like Legolas. <laughs> I was thinking Tarzan. <laughs> or Tarzan. Remember Tarzan yeah. on the ropes, but yeah. Legolas, you're totally right. Skate, uh, sort of like skating down <laughs> skating. on these wires. And he's, or what he's is like, it? The world ends with you. Yeah, they kind of have that similar kind of thing. Jumping from wire to wire. Yeah. Then they get like broken, but they all fall down onto the platform, and they're just yes. like going up the stairs, fighting enemies. Seymour is there because with, you know Yuna is marrying again. Yeah. <laughs> marrying Seymour. Yes. And Seymour is again, well, falling for Yuna's trap, <laughs> Yuna's tricks. She's got another <laughs> trick up her sleeve. She <laughs> does. You see more, we'll never guess this time. And it's like, dude. This whole sequence is probably of all the games, so or all the scenes so far in the game, been the one where I kind of just, I, it doesn't feel like Dude, the most logically sound Me too. Scene. Thro even throughout the whole scene, I agree. It's like it, probably the worst scene in the game so it far. It doesn't right? make sense. See, this is unfortunate. This may be, this might bring up a little Final Fantasy 13 
at this point, right? Where oh, it sure. looks freaking beautiful. Yes. Bevel, the city, the way that it's spread out, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, is really cool. And and the, the roads and the way it winds mm. and the, the shape of it. And then it comes up to this like really cool you know, like pinnacle where they're getting married. And the, the visuals are just top notch. Yeah. Super, super good. But many of the things that happen here, I, I, I have a lot of questions. Yeah, about. it's just, it just, it doesn't feel like it was as well thought out as maybe a lot of the other scenes in the game. Very uh, much so. so very much let's so. just get through it here. So you, you get up to the top of the stairs, and Kanok and a bunch of warrior monks have like guns, and they're like yes. confronted with them. And Auron's like, you're not supposed to use those. <laughs> yes. And Kanok says, there are exceptions. Yes. <laughs> I love that. This is where Waka really starts to realize that I like know. Yevon is not what he thought it was, right? So the, poor Waka. Maist, one of the maesters and all the warrior monks are using Machina guns. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's one problem. Not just that, like the Bevel Temple. Like yes. Waka's freaking yeah, out they when have we get like, there. They have like computer yeah, terminals. Yeah, it's all computer and portals and stuff. And he's just like, what oh the fetch gosh. in the temple? Right? Yeah, in the freaking temple. In in like the holy place. So they've got yeah. Machina in there. Anyway, Yuna. So she's holding her staff behind her as if she was hiding it the whole time. I know. It's it, I know that's probably not it, Cause the, but the, it feels like that. The likelihood <laughs> is that Seymour knew what she was going to do. That's yeah. the likely right. thing. And they right? had a contingency for that. However, seeing the way that this all happens, she could have sent him. Like when she sent uh, Lord Jisco when he showed back up, yes. it was, she didn't have to do her whole big crazy dance. She just kind of like did yeah. a, a sign and like right. and and he was sent. It took right. like two seconds. Right. Uh, Seymour's taking a huge risk. I'll yeah. just put it that way. He's taking a huge, huge risk here. It's almost like they needed the party to show up and get into a position where they could be yes. killed. So They're that lucky he could that Tita showed up right so when that he did. He could then <laughs> tell, yeah, it's almost like yeah. her plan would have worked had we not shown up. Yes, or shown up two minutes later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or something like that. Anyways, it, it. in fact, I almost want to watch this again because it felt like, in watching it, that she, like, withdrew the staff and she was hiding it somehow. It's like a six-foot staff. <laughs> but, like, how? Let me, let me look at that again. Okay, so she's walking, and she's holding flowers With in front hands. of her. With two hands. Yep. So... Yeah, I don't see that staff anywhere. No. <laughs> now let's see when she pulls um, it out. You're gonna have to go. There's, there they are. After we attack, she's attacked. holding flowers in front of her. Yeah, it's okay. After this, Kenok and the dudes, uh, they run up the here stairs. It is. Yeah, it'll be up here. We skateboard on the wires. <laughs> I love. It. It's cool though. It really is cool. It is cool. I mean, I didn't like it in Lord of the Rings. I like it in this. Game. <laughs> this game is uh, like appropriate. Like, to have yeah, that yes, kind of visual, yeah, yeah. right? Okay, okay, so they've got the guns on them. Kenox surrounding them. They, they all have Machina guns and stuff. <laughs> and she looks at him, right? And then she just, like, looks down and pulls out a staff <laughs> from somewhere. Where did that come from, dude? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't think... Where the I'd... fetch did <clears throat> that come from? Okay, now someone's gonna have an answer. I'm sure they will. But that and doesn't I mean- I welcome it. Help that me doesn't mean- Help me make the scene yeah, better. I well, just, we'll see. It, <laughs> I don't want to dislike the scene, but it's just like, where the fetch did that staff come from? She's wearing a wedding dress, dude. Yeah. Like, tight-fitting, form-fitting wedding dress. Where did that staff come from? Okay, so she pulls the staff out. Whatever, that's not yeah. even the worst part. <clears throat> no, it's actually not. So, Keenock here, is is got the gun pulled on him and and she's gonna step out uh, to send him right. So it's it's kind of like a a, a Mexican standoff situation, right? It's like uh, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna send you, let go but of my he'll friends. Kill the friends. Yeah. So, anyways, she starts to do the sending. You, you you're gonna see the fireflies coming off of Seymour here in a second. Like so, she's beginning now. She's holding yes. the staff uh, vertical. And uh, you see the pyrefly starting to come off his body like that. So and he's she's like, like no and big. Micah is the one who steps in. You're right. And says, if you value your friend's lives, then stop. So it wasn't even Seymour who did it. No. So Micah gets her to stop because he threatens to kill her friends unless she stops 
trying to send him. Yeah, but here's the crazy thing. Given that he was right there, she could easily have sent him to uh, Probably <laughs> why he got concerned oh, I know. and stepped up. But right? but even when he steps up, it's not like he used his authority as the leader to get her to step down. He just said, no, we're going to kill your friends. Yes. And so the idea there is just that, like... They, that's all they had on her. She was so determined. She was going to do this. Yeah. Except, oh no, we got your friends. But. Now here's the part. If we weren't there, it still would have gone the way. Right. Micah would have been sent too. Right. She would have basically succeeded in sending them both had yeah. we not been there. Now, here's the part that to me was just like, what the, f- what, <clears throat> what on earth? Actually, so yeah. Sorry, we're watching the scene as we're like commentating. We'll edit <laughs> so this a I'll edit this somehow or whatever. But. Uh, so yeah, they they go through with the wedding, right? So she she kisses him, and it's like, oh my gosh, like don't do it, no, don't kiss him. And and she lets it happen, yeah. whatever. They get married. Um, their faces look so different in the actual like FMVs. I actually I know. don't like them. I like oh, them better really? in the normal like PS2 graphics. Oh, the PS2 for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. These faces are weird in the yeah. But she clenches her fist. She doesn't like it. He sees that. He's like, oh, he's pissed at Seymour for Ooh. making her do this, right? Gotta okay. Kill that guy. So, what she does at this point. Oh, oh, that's right. And then he says, See, kill he them. said to kill them. So, they go against their word. They're going to kill them anyway. So, in desperation, what she does to get them to <laughs> stop killing her friends is she threatens to kill herself. Yes. By throwing herself off of the temple. Um,. That's where Keenock said there's exceptions to using Machino yeah. uh, to R in there. She, so her leverage in the scene here is that she's going to throw herself off the building and kill herself if they kill, uh, if they kill yeah. the party. I see where you're going with this and it's my exact thoughts. Yeah. No, it is cool. It is, is a nice touch yes. that as she's backing up, you see that there's like wings the shape of wings yeah. underneath her dress. Right. And it's like, oh, this is a bird that can fly, right? right? That's the idea. She won't actually die. So Seymour waves off them from killing them. Yeah. He, we run up there, and she tells us to get out, like go away. Because that's what needs to happen now. We need to leave. Exactly. So that, because <laughs> that's the leverage she has. But before they leave, she jumps off anyway. She jumps anyway. And now it's like they can it's just like kill your friends. They did, except Riku has a f- special little flashy bomb that yes. she could have used earlier At but didn't. At any point. <laughs> anyway. Okay, I'm sorry. We're being a little critical of this scene. We're being very critical of this scene. We haven't been this critical of any I don't scene think of this entire so game, far, right? Yeah. And this is a cool scene if you just watch it and eat popcorn, right? <laughs> but if you're trying to analyze like what's going on here, it, it falls apart very quickly. This is possibly one of the like, weaker moments like of the entire game. Why does she jump now? She's actually putting her friends back in danger I again know. by now doing it's like, this. Okay, her collateral's gone. Yes. Now we can just kill these people because we don't like them and now, they're a pain in the butt. Her plan to summon Valifor to rescue her was a great plan if we yes. had already been escorted out or left. Exactly. Or then we, we all could have gone. Then she jumps. And now, okay, so yeah. here's what I wrote. This is... <laughs> It, it was more, how would you put it? It's romantic that Yuna did the swan dive while they were all watching. Yes. Because Titus was watching, right? Right. It really shouldn't have worked. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't, no. like, she should have done that when we weren't there. But with us being there, you get the moment of Titus who's like, no, don't jump, because right. he can't see the, the feathers. Right. And, oh, no, she's really going to die. Like, this is so sad. It, it heightens it. But Titus has to be there for that to happen. Yes. Which means that she has to do it when he's still there, <laughs> but even though that's the dumbest time to do it. Yes. They should have left first, then she should yes. have Yes, but for the emotional impact, it had to happen this way. I think we talked a little bit about this in Final Fantasy VIII, where there's a reason why they did some of the decisions they did, and it was to have the maximum emotional impact despite the sense yes. not necessarily being there as much. Right? I like the idea of the scene being, Yuna's gonna play an Uno reverse card here. So yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So basically, <laughs> Seymour lies. The, the Maesters lie. Um, if you marry me, if you go through with it, if you don't send me, we'll we'll let them live. They're lying. They're actually going to kill them anyways. Yeah. So she pulls an Uno reverse card where she says, "I'm going to kill myself yeah. unless you let them go." 
But the plan was, I'm actually going to summon Valifor to save me and escape. And then we'll all escape together. Yeah, yes. Yeah. The problem is or that go they, to the temple. The party didn't leave. I know, dude. But so she once she still, jumps, they just shoot just, them and kill them. And I, I just, I get it. I get what they did and sort of why they did it. But um, you just, you really have to not think about this one. I think. Yeah. Um, hopefully, somebody in the comments will be able to explain how this possibly makes a little bit more sense. Um, yeah. But you know, we could just uh, yeah, move on at this point. Whatever. The scene's freaking crazy. It's crazy. It's so beautiful then Riku, visually. Riku throws her flash bomb. <laughs> like this. She goes, cover your eyes! Throws the flash bomb and Seymour's just like staring right at it. Just, where is that? I know. And then it right? flashes right in it's his like face. The warning to the party somehow doesn't serve as a warning to the people who I are going to get She shouts it too. She shouts hey, it Hey, cover your eyes. Only my guys, everyone else looking. <laughs> it's like eyes peeled. Just like right there. I love it. It's so perfect. Uh, oh, but anyways, geez. so that worked, and apparently Riku could could have done that earlier. In fact, this is how the scene probably should have gone. We do our sick, like, little Tarzan, like, mm. list ropey slide in there. As soon as we land, Riku throw that flash <laughs> bomb. Boom! Everyone's stunned. We run in, grab Yuna, because we're the only ones that didn't get flashy leave. because we closed our eyes. And then, boom, we're out, and that's that. And then she yes. goes, ooh, but I wanted to send Seymour. And we say, screw it, we don't have time. He was going to kill you. We're yeah, out. or, or right? that could have been, like, if you guys hadn't have shown up, I would have been able to send them. You ruined it. Yeah. Yes, and and that would have made her more competent off the back of her looking very un, uh, incompetent. That's earlier. right. Where it's like, hey, I was in control. I know what yes, I was doing. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Earlier when we were talking about how naive she was when she mm. thought, oh, I'll marry him and then convince him to turn himself in. Right. Yeah, yeah. Just and asking now, nicely. Now on yeah, the yeah. back of that, she can be like, this time the plan really was going to work and you ruined it. And now they it's, didn't get sent. Yes. Or he, they don't know Micah's an unsent yet. But, ah, yeah, yeah. But it would have sent them been both. A surprise. Right. So anyway, yeah. that so, could have been interesting. I do want to talk a little bit more about the scene uh, by maybe way of a less, <laughs> a less quick lie. Um, because the reason why Yuna was going to do it at this point was because um, everyone was watching, right? Yeah. So it's like, oh, just marry Seymour. And then when you leave to go have private time, then send him. Yes. And then, and then you're good, right? Right. But she wanted to do it while everyone was watching. <clears throat> So yeah. this was a show. She was. She had already decided this was going to break. It was going to be broadcast. Yes, she was going to send him on of people live were gonna TV. Were going to be there. Yeah, send him to prove that he was not alive. <laughs> and in doing so, would have done considerable damage to the religion. Yeah. Uh, but she has already decided because she was doing that. She's already decided that I am going. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go against the religion, and I'm going to damage the right. the faith, the people's, right. not the F A Y T H. But the people's F A I T H, yeah, yeah. the people's faith, right? Um, because it's better this way. This isn't right, you know. But she had already made that decision, so that's important to note. Just the right. fact that she was doing it when she was doing it—that's important. Um, also, there's a building kind of behind them. In fact, the whole kind of structure that's right behind uh, Seymour and Yuna when they get married, behind Micah, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like a pretty cool building um, from a place in Indonesia. So um, the wedding takes place near a place inspired by the Balinese shrine in Indonesia. Mm. So there's a sweet, sweet shrine at the Balinese temple. And it goes up. It's like really tall and it's really old. But it looks just like uh, the place here in um, oh, nice. in Bevel. And I believe it was inspired by that because it just fits the, the area and the design and stuff. Oh, sweet. So it's pretty super cool. Pretty cool. All right. That's what I got there. Okay. So are we? do we move on we'll to the temple? that scene. So Kay. she takes off on Valfor to go straight into the temple. The, she's going to go right, because she still needs to collect the Aeon from the temple. Yeah, and we didn't so, know where she went at first, um, mm. but I think I it think was Kimari Riku. Or or was it Kimari calls it out and be like, says there's only one place yeah, she Because she needs to get the Aeon. Yeah, other because we can't. they can't go back to Bevel after no, this. Like, this no. is their one chance, right? Yeah, so they all run to the temple. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cool temple, it's surrounded by water, <clears throat> but yeah. we don't get a look at it too much, unfortunately. And this is where I wrote down that once they're inside, Waka's <clears throat> surprised to see Machina, like a computer console yeah. inside, that In. Riku uses to like open doors and things. And he says, what is Ma uh, what's a Machina doing inside the temple? And Riku's response to that is kind of funny. I suppose it comes in handy. She doesn't even like connect <laughs> that this was like... <laughs> like a problem. <laughs> like a shock to him. <laughs> And he's like, that's not what I mean. The teachings. <laughs> what about the teachings? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. They go a little bit further in. They see another one. Yep, there's a bunch. Like, another Machina? Man. And Aaron says, so this is Yevon's true face. They betray their own teachings. 
and Waka just sighs and says, they treated us like dirt. So he's, yep, yep, he's yep. realizing that Yevon's a lie. Yeah, and yeah. That's shaking his very foundation. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's pretty quiet throughout this sequence in mm-hmm. general, because, <clears throat> I mean, I guess it has happened in degrees of a sort. So after the big argument between Riku and Waka oh, yeah. back in Makalania, you know, he comes to terms with the fact that the, the Albed are being, like, severely mistreated, but also just, like, hunted down by the Guado. Yes. Yes. That was, yep. like, step number one. And then now, step number two, it's like, oh, they have Machina. They're using Machina weapons. They have Machina in the temple itself. Yeah. I can't believe they lied to us. Because like the question is, well, why are the Guado, why, why are the um, <clears throat> Yevonites attacking the Albed? Oh, because they use Machina. Yeah. And oh. then, then you go to the temple in, in, um, in Bevel, and it's like, we, we use Machina. Like, this is so hypocritical. I suppose the first step actually would have been him realizing Seymour murdered his own father. Oh, yeah, that was a big one. And he Yeah, that was a had to fight him. And then step two would have been... Because they, I think they got something along the lines of excommunicated after they fought yes, Seymour, right? right? Where it was like, you're right. done. Yeah, so, so that step, was the first step one. Step yeah. two would have been a Piccinell realizing the Guado were in the wrong fighting. Yeah, the yeah. Step three would have been Machina in the Temple of Bluebell. It's like, yep. holy crap, this is... And a step four is coming. <laughs> oh, yeah. Once they actually get into the Chamber of the Faith, uh, Titus is trying to open the door to go in. And Waka sort of begins to protest this. He's like, but what about the teachings? He's like, <laughs> it's like I don't screw? give a fetch about the yeah. teachings, dude. Screw this. Like, we got to go get her. And that's where Kimari comes and helps him open yeah. the door. And so Titus is walking into the Holy of Holies of Yevon uh, by going into the Chamber of the Faith itself. And this was crazy. Because this is where you see the boy in the purple hood for the first time in a yes, long time. Yes, the ghost time. kid. Mm-hmm. Yes, he's there. He, she, he's, yep. he, it's a boy's voice singing the hymn of the yeah, faith. Yeah, okay. And he's there floating yep. kind of above. And he he kind is of the like, faith he is of the this faith. temple. Yep, yep. And he sort of like merges with, uh, uh, with Yuna and you yep. get the Bahamut um, yeah. summon, the, the Aeon. And so, Bahamut has that symbol on his back, which is what the, the, the kid's boys, shirt had. The purple yeah. hooded boy has on his yep. back. Yep. And the six um, waves kind of spiraling in. It's right. really, really cool. So, from the context we have so far, we can yeah. put together that this purple hooded boy, who has been with Titus his whole life, yeah. is the faith associated with the Bevel with Temple and the Summon and the Bahamut. Bahamut, yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. So Bahamut yeah. has been with Titus since he was a little boy. Just kind of falling back in. Back in his thousand years ago, yeah, yeah, Xanarkand, yeah. his Xanarkand. And now he's a faith here in this time. So hmm. things are starting to come together a little bit. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. <clears throat> but just keep that in mind. Uh, there's going to be a lot more with, with that kid here soon. Um, uh, oh, so Titus asks... What's that when he, when he enters into the chamber? Yeah. And Aaron says, a faith. They join with the summoner and together receive the Aeon. They are human souls imprisoned in stone by ancient Yevon rites. The dead should be allowed to rest. So this more or less is the same yeah. thing Lulu told us earlier about, or Lulu and Waka did in, I don't remember if it was the Kilika Temple or if it was the Bisay Temple. I think it was Kilika. Hmm. In Kilika Temple, they, they more or less described what, what a faith is. But... The interesting part is that Aaron says the dead should be allowed to rest. Yes. So again, the faith, these souls who were trapped in the stones, right? Yeah. That serve as like the, well, as a key sort of like part of the process of the, the summoning of Aeons, right? For long, long, long time, they've just been stuck in those statues. And so Aaron yep. is suggesting they should be allowed to rest to, yeah, to yeah. not have to do that anymore. So um, it's almost like the the faith, as far as I can tell from what had been spoken of earlier, the faith volunteered to, yes. to do this. Yes. Um, but, but after a certain amount of time. after a while, it does become cruel to expect so much of them for so long. Yeah. 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 To just forever stay trapped in these statues, doing this cycle of... It's a cycle, it's a spiral, it's a, a forever... Spiral. Yes. We're going to learn and a lot more about this. We now. are, and I've got <laughs> some more notes on that, yeah. but yes. Um, so as they're leaving the uh, the temple, uh, Kenok and the warrior monks confront the party again, and... Uh, 
tell us that they're going to stand trial. So they're going to stand trial, and I yeah, think we Aaron asks, like, is it going to be a fair trial or something like that? <laughs> and Kinoch is like, He's like, of course it will be. Why wouldn't it be? Yeah. Um, now, when we actually get into this sort of like, I don't know what you'd call it. It's like the room where they do the trial. It's like the court of Yevon. Yeah. I'm interested to see if you took any notes on the symbols. Because I did, yeah. there's that yes. big, like banner behind it's like a teardrop Kelk, thing who's yeah. like the Ronso Maester. Oh yeah yeah. As he's talking and they've got like the symbol of Yevon at the top. Yep. And then there's like four underneath that. Yeah. And then those some are others on the periphery. The four runes. Yeah, yeah. So it's like um the runes of um, what would you call it? Like uh, truth and light and nothing. And uh, some of these some of them are the ones that are associated with in the temples with yeah. um the aeons, oh, okay. right? There's a specific like letter, right? But the letter, kind of like with Japanese kanji, represents um, specific things, right? It's not just the sound, but it's also a meaning for something, oh, right? Sure. And so, yeah, it's surrounded. There's a couple smaller ones and then some bigger ones, and it's interesting. But also, right behind Master Mika is, I think, north, south, east, west is the oh. the the runes for the cardinal directions, and um, things like that. Yeah. So what do but you it's make in, like, of a that teardrop shape banner. with all this stuff? Like, um, not knowing, because I, 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 I knew the symbol of Yevon, which is at the top. Yes. But I didn't know what the other symbols necessarily represented. If they are the same symbols associated with the temples, that would make sense. Because it's like Yevon's at the top, and these are like the subservient sort of like yeah. regions or something like that of the world, right? Where the other temples are. Is that more or less what it is? or? Uh, yes, that is. Because every temple in Yevon, yeah, so yeah, these are the ones. Symbols. So there's yeah. Yevon, but this one means, uh, well, it's Mew. It's, it's, um, it means nothing uh. in, ja in Japanese. The best translation is they just say Mew, but it means nothing. This one means flame, thunder, ice, light, water, darkness, and sin, right? Okay. So sin, so alpha and omega, right? Yeah. Yevon and sin. Mm. A and Z, the beginning and the last. Yeah. So let's read then. Let's take right. this and so let's figure out which symbols. Yevon at the top. Yevon's at, Yevon's at the top. Then you have the four underneath that are the second largest elements. So it's not I think the this one is not that. It's, it's This one, H. Yeah, that one. So it's H. And then mm. there's two circles up top, which is B. Yep. And then this one, which looks like... Actually, it looks like this, but it's reversed. Yes. Is, oh, oh, is there? Yeah, it's the other way one? of this. Is it this or no? I think it's a flipped. Yeah, it's just this flipped, I think. And then this one. So it's H B F. Is this one? This one's also flipped. K. Okay. okay, so those are clipped. Those these are two flipped. are flipped on this side. You know what? This is unfortunate because I was hoping that these would rep represent the thunder, ice, the elements. They mm. don't. They represent letters that actually don't mean anything. Oh, really? Anyway, I, I don't know what it means. I don't know what it means. It might may mean something, <laughs> but I actually I had to actually skip that over in the game of analyzing because I was I couldn't really figure it out. Well, so uh, <laughs> let's actually get into what Kelk Ronzo talks about here. Okay, so they're being charged. He says you've inflicted dire injury upon Maester Seymour Guado, conspired yes, with the Albed, and joined their insurrection. These are traitorous and unforgivable crimes that disturb the order of Yevon. Tell this court what possessed you to participate in such violence. So she tries to tell them, Seymour is actually the traitor because he killed his father. Kelk and, is yeah. way surprised to hear this. Yes. But I love Seymour's response. He's like, oh, hadn't you heard? He doesn't even like, try to... I know. He didn't even know. try to yeah. like, hide it. It's just like, oh, you didn't know You that? didn't know? Uh, <laughs> sorry. Wait, really? You yeah. didn't know? Kelk is very surprised, <laughs> but Kelk is not that surprised. He d he's not surprised when he hears that everyone's that a fiend. <laughs> Mika, Mika or Micah is a fiend. Or yeah. Micah is unsent. Yeah, and he's just standing there and like, yeah, everybody this is, this knew is that. Fine. But he didn't yeah. know that Seymour had murdered Jiskel, who was the previous maester before. I wonder if Jiskel knew that Micah was unsent. Oh, and that's maybe why. I really wonder that now. I'd be curious Got about when, when did when did Micah die? Approximately. That's a good question because Kelk seems seems to be aware of this. Yes, ahead of time. So I think. Um, anyways, Yuna then implores Micah <laughs> to send Seymour, and that's when Micah says, "Send the unsent where they belong." 
And she's like, yes. She says, that's the job of a summoner. That's, yeah. And that's what I was doing at the wedding. I was sending, a, I'm a summoner. I send people. I didn't do anything wrong. Right. And, and Mika uh, is like. And so he mm. says, send the dead. <clears throat> and then he reveals that he himself is dead. He's fireflies flying around. Him. Yeah. And Kenok says to this, enlightened rule, or enlightened rule by the dead is preferable to the misguided failures of the living. Oh, that's great. This harkens that's back great. a little bit to the initial question that Titus brought up when he first heard how long Micah had been the ruler yeah, of Spira. Yeah, 50 years or He's something, like, yeah. He's like, 50 years, isn't that long? Shouldn't he be retired by now? Yes, or dead. <laughs> that's essentially kind of paid off in a way here. Yeah. It's like he it's was like, yeah, right that to was question too long. how long someone has ruled. Yes. He shouldn't. He should yeah. have died and passed it on. Yep. But they want to keep their power. The dead, yep. Kenok in particular, I, I believe that <clears throat> Seymour, just a little bit later than this, says that Kenok is primarily concerned with, you know, re retaining or holding on to his power, yes. right? Yeah. So the maesters are totally which, corrupt. Which should mean that Kenok would return as a fiend leader as well. Yeah. Unless he sent him, I don't know. But can, oh, Because Seymour is supposed to be a summoner, but can you send as an unsent? Ooh, <laughs> yeah, if you're a fiend, do you lose that? Would you send yourself if you were to try that? I don't know. That's I don't a know good if question. He sends him or not. But That's a good question. I would think he wouldn't want Kenok to come back yeah. as an unsent. Yeah, you're right. But I don't know. Maybe they got another summer or somewhere. Isaru, Isaru is helping them, right? Maybe Isaru did it. <laughs> That's true. Um, <clears throat> anyway, Seymour ends up saying, life is but a passing dream, but the death that follows is eternal. And Micah says, men die, beasts die, trees die, even continents perish. Only the power of death truly commands in spirit. Yep, only, that's the only thing that truly yep. commands in spirit is the power of death. Resisting its power is futile. And Aaron's And they're in to, the chamber surrounded by the, the firefly symbol, I love Yeah, that. and I think Aaron goes into this a little bit more about the, sp the spira, the spiral of death being yes. like what... The cycle. ...commands or what yes. like rules spirit, just like he's saying here, right? Yeah. Um, so they're kind of, they've, they've given into this idea. And this is why they use sin. The church uses sin to sort of keep control what little power they have in this world of death. <laughs> they are able to maintain it because sin can continue to go around massacring people and the, the society doesn't advance very much. And as yeah. Aaron said earlier, um, this place resists change. Yes. It's yes. a cycle that just keeps doing the same thing endlessly. Yeah. Right. So there's a, a Buddhist idea <clears throat> associated with this called the wheel of samsara yeah and samsara being the the cycle of death and rebirth into a newly suffering world each time mm. right so you exit the suffering only to re-enter the suffering again mm -hmm. at a new point and it goes forever in fact the the wheel on the ship the the airship that we get yeah. that kind of powers it you know it's got it kind of looks like something along the lines of a wheel of samsara kind oh, of thing yeah. it's got that imagery there um, and then we're seeing it explicitly said here like the, at, the issue is that they're keeping it this way. At the same time, I don't. They don't know how to fix it. Yeah. But um, there's a point to all this, yes. <clears throat> which is um, I wrote this down here. When revealed that the dudes running the church are dead, it strengthens the analogy of the idea of a dead religion, right? Oh, sure. So when a culture or a religion becomes dead, it becomes stale. It becomes unable to change, and un it doesn't. You can't even really blame them. They don't know how to change. They don't know how. They're mm. they're old. Mm. They're it's 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 beyond them, right? And so when a dead religion or dead culture, you know, is discovered by the next generation, um, this uh, resembles Osiris in Egypt, right? It is the job of the divine child to rescue their father from the belly of the beast, right? Mm. So. Osiris represents essentially the dead culture, the dead religion, the the blind, right? Because I think he he ends up losing an eye or both of his eyes. Um, and so he's blind, he's old, he ends up getting killed and betrayed and he dies and it's up to Horus to bring him back and then Horus gives him his eye, right? Mm -hmm. The eye of Horus, so that, um, you know, the, the kingdom can continue but using Horus's eyes, right? Using the eyes of the son as opposed to the eyes of the father. So there's this whole idea here but the I behind it is <coughs> the idea that um, you know, when, when a religion gets old and dead, then it needs to be revitalized from within by, you know, the divine son or something like that, the, the divine child. You know what's interesting about it's that? It's like the next generation. As, as much as I have problems with sort of the the tone and direction of Final Fantasy X-2, mm -hmm. 
it mm, kind of represents that. It's like a world that has now finally severed its connection to Yevon, which kept it in this yeah. state for a thousand years. You know, I haven't played too and much. And now it's just, com they ju what, does, what does a society do now without that governance <laughs> Or well, like stronghold <laughs> over it, right? I have seen the <clears throat> opening cutscene of Final Fantasy X too. Very, <clears throat> very different. <laughs> it's it's Saturnalia. What do you call yeah. it? It's Carnival. It's it's festival time. It's Mardi Gras. Like every day, it's just yeah. like party time now, right? Yeah. And there, there's a time and place for that. Um, but when when a religion never allows that to happen, you could say the calm was that, but that's like four times in a thousand years. Yeah, <laughs> it's like right. that's not very much, and right? And it lasted less yeah. than ten years, probably. People need a New Year's festival. People need the um, topsy turvy, the uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame, that festival that they do, yeah, right. um, where everything's just upside down for one day, and then there's the fool who's the king yeah. of the, and then at the end of the festival, that fool gets banished or killed or whatever, mm. right? Because well, back to the real world now, right? Yep. But you get that brief time, and it's from the intro of Ten Two. It seems like that's what's happening, but that brings with it its own problems. Yeah, it's sure. the reverse problem. It's yeah. the we have no structure, party time, everything's <laughs> great. And now we're all into corporate advertisement, and our idols are no longer religious leaders. They're now the pop singers, yeah, and the right. oh, isn't aren't we better now? It's like no, you're basically doing the same thing, just in a different it's just way. Just a pendulum swing. And yeah. now you kind of need to go back the other way a right. little bit, yeah. But yeah. I haven't played all of Ten Two to comment much as to how the whole sure. game goes. I've just seen the beginning of it. Right. Um, you know, response to this, but what of sin? I'm a summoner, my lord, like my father before me. I'm on a pilgrimage to stop the death that sin brings. Yep. Are you? Are you telling me? That, to, that that too is futile. And then uh, Maester Micah responds, um, oh no, she goes on to say, Grand, Grand Maester Micah, I'm not alone. All the people who have opposed sin, their battles, their sacrifices, were they all in vain? And he says, not in vain. No matter how many summoners give their lives, sin cannot be truly defeated. So they've already accepted that fact. Like sin can't actually be. That's what. That's more or less what I'm saying. Can't. They don't. They don't know how to change. <clears throat> like they've lost that. They don't know that it's possible. Yeah. So their rebirth cannot be stopped. Yet the courage of those who fight gives the people hope. This is nothing futile, or there is nothing futile in the life and death of a summoner. So they know. They think they know. Sin can't be defeated. Yeah. And that's not the point. The point is to give some people some hope amidst this spiral of death that co yeah. actually commands in spirit. Right, that's the true God, right? <clears throat> yeah. It's like a demiurge that floods the yeah. earth over and over and over. Yeah. And Aaron says, <coughs> never futile, but never ending, right? So yes. it just is forever, this is just gonna keep going. And then Micah says, indeed, that is the essence of Yevon. Yevon is embodied by eternal, unchanging continuity, Summer. I liked that line a lot. I'm gonna like read that, it yeah. again. Yevon is embodied by eternal, unchanging continuity. And yeah. you could see that in the, in the symbol of a spiral. Yeah, yeah. Unchanging, eternal continuity. Yeah. A cycle that doesn't end. That is what Yevon is all about. It's all about keeping things the same forever. And more or less, yeah. they want it that way. Yes. That's how they keep their power. And so Yuna says to that, no, that can't be right. And then Micah says, those questions, uh, those who question these truths, they are traitors. So they get imprisoned after that point. It's like, yep. obviously, they're not going to see eye, on, eye to eye on that. So once Oren and Titus are kind of in their little cell, Oren mm -hmm. uh, says, ah, the spiral of death, summoners challenge the bringer of death, sin, and die doing so. Guardians give their lives to protect their summoner. The faith are the souls of the dead. Even the maesters of Yevon are unsent. Spira yeah. is full of death. Only sin is reborn, and then only to bring more death. It is a cycle of death spiraling endlessly. So <clears throat> that is the plight of Spira now fully unveiled. The church is perpetuating it, in, in part at least because they have no idea how to break the cycle anyways. Yeah. So their role is we're going to at least give people some hope Yes. In the midst of that spiral, we can't do anything about. Now, I can't blame them too much for not knowing how to fix the problem. They've yeah. inherited this. They didn't choose this. It is what it is. What you can blame them is for not allowing other people to um, exercise some type of, like, novel ideas. Yeah. Or other people to innovate on yes. what they've done. To right? try When you stifle different. any new approach, mm -hmm. that's when it's like, okay, 
now this is a problem. Right. Like you do what you do and that's fine, but when you're gonna execute and imprison and throw away people who are think that they have a different solution just mm -hmm. because it's different, yeah. now you've entered the like the right. bad evil territory. Now you've mm -hmm. entered the, the death territory where it's like yeah. it's it is it is dead. It is just it's a dead religion. It needs yeah. to be re revived, it you know. It needs to be resurrected. Resurrected. It needs to die and be yeah. Yeah, it needs to the, die the and the eyes come back. of the sun need to come in. Exactly. Like the eyes of the sun and then just the cycle of, <coughs> of the sun, S U N. <laughs> yes. Going night and day. So. Yes. Um okay, so after that, let's see. Oh, Keenock comes in and he announces that a sentencing is gonna happen. Um, and Aaron says something like, uh, <laughs> you know, you're gonna ex you mean execution or something like that. And Keenock says something like, uh, I wouldn't execute my friend or something like that. He still considers Aaron his friend. Hmm. And what's funny is that Aaron hmm. even says later to Seymour, despite Keenock not being the man he once knew, he's yeah. still his friend. I'm gonna make you pay for like actually right. yes, killing he your does. friend. Right, yes, he does. So despite everything, they still consider each other friends. But I, I'm actually a, a little bit fuzzy on what exactly this sentence is. I know, dude. They just like yeah. put them down into a place and it's like, well, people don't survive wherever know, they're sending them. But there is but an escape. Maybe they yeah. can, so like just wait at the end and kill them if they come out anyways. No, I have one. I, I don't get it. I have one. I don't get it. Like one why? Time. Why not just freaking shoot them? Like what's what's the point of this? I think, well, because they have all their guns and stuff. Yeah. And so obviously they'll they'll kill people in when they need to, if they feel the need to. Yeah. But I don't know that that was fully thought through. But I can say that this is more or less along the lines of death by exposure. This okay. is when, like, this is all over um, ancient stories and stuff. But, like, you, your child, you put them up. I think Remus and Romulus, this is the founders of Rome. This is what happened with them. So they ended up getting put out to die, left alone, because to kill them directly is too far. Nobody wants to actually kill the child. But they are okay with putting it somewhere where it will naturally die on its own, and then mm. they assume, oh, I didn't kill it, that was the elements, or a wolf got it and killed him, and so no, but maybe, I didn't kill him, right? So I'm still clean. <clears throat> maybe it's like a right? political thing. It's, it's yeah, I'm thinking the death penalty is illegal in here. Maybe, yeah. I'm thinking like they don't have public executions. The people, especially if they just had a wedding with Seymour and <laughs> yeah. Una, and then the yeah. church executes Una, like... <laughs> Like yeah. the, the same they, day. They could still kill everyone else though. <laughs> yeah, but like publicly that might be not like yes. a good, especially since the it wedding was good. supposed to make people feel better. But it seems like they use this, this these waters a lot. Yeah. So I'm thinking that there might actually be a law against executing people. So it could almost be like a, this is in the hands of Yevon kind of thing. Yes, right? it's it, nature, it's an in, act of um, God. Right. In Game of Thrones, they have not something terribly similar, but kind of. In um, you can call for like a duel at any time. Like if you're, ah, if, you're yes. if you're put on trial or whatever, you can do this. Uh, you can like call Ag for Agni this Kai. duel, yeah. and then the idea is like the gods will choose who is innocent and who is guilty by uh, the the, the hero or whoever you choose to represent you in the duel. If they right. win, then you then the gods are saying that the you're gods innocent. favored. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's that kind of thing, or it's like we're going to throw them in there, and then like if Yevon, the idea is if they're innocent, then Yevon will help them escape. Sure, I, it's a, that's more or less what mm. I'm saying. I yeah. think I think that's it. Where it's like when people would leave their children out for exposure, the Spartans did this. Yeah. They whenever they had a kid in the small military or, oriented village, they would put them out on the mountainside, yeah. and then the next day they would come back and see if they lived or not. Mm. And if the ch it's a brand newborn kid, you know, and if the child was still alive, they'd say, "Oh, this is a strong kid. Let's keep him." And if the child was dead, they said, "Well, God, God didn't want him to be part of our group." So right. publicly, they're going to say they put them in there. And I think the place is called yeah. the Via Purifica. So, Via Purifica, it's <coughs> Latin. So I'm going to guess Purifica is, yeah. a, is a... Purity, yeah. What do you call <laughs> it? Um, a derivative of purifying yes. or some yes. sort of... Uh, uh, what do you call it? Like refiner's fire sort of idea thing, yeah. right? So if it's like if you make it through that, then it's like Yevon... It's, it's like Yevon's that. It's doing. I don't <laughs> know that it... It is like that, because this is funny, because Via Purifica means the, the path, like Via, like V, Via, whatever. Yeah. It's, if you know Spanish, you know that word, but Via Purifico means the path to purity, or the path of purity. Yeah. And it's like baptism, right? Yes. And that's true. The symbolism's all right, right? Like, this is the purified waters. When you come out of the waters of purity, you are... It, the idea is that, yeah, the gods have deemed you pure, mm. or that you've become pure through the process, either yeah, way. Yeah, right. Um, 
but that's not really how they use it. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like just a death sentence yeah. with a it, technical way to get out. It, and the assumption is if they get out, it's a will of God. But then they send people to go kill them at the, right. at the eggs. So it's like that's the part that's the secretive, corrupt maesters. Yes. Where they're going to tell everyone else they went through the Via Purifica. Yeah. And they didn't okay. come out. Sure, yes. But really it's like there is technically a chance they could so make sure they die so just which is why him. they send isaru and like all these things to like kill him right okay i you you're mm. i think you've got this figured yeah. out i think what you're saying is is what it is i think i think that's, I think that's the idea here yes. is, is they just are avoiding a public disaster by yeah. saying well we didn't kill them we sent them through the via Perifico, exactly. and if they had gone you're through right. there and yevon you know blessed them they would have come out alive yes but Maybe that was like the original idea of Yevon uh, hundreds of years ago, but now they just use it as an execution. First, yeah, thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That makes sense. <clears throat> was, you could imagine it as being the, the the Via Purifico that you would go in, and it used to be a lot shorter, right? Yeah. And then they kind of lengthen it and yeah, lengthen it and lengthen it, it and turn it into a labyrinth, and now it's like, hey, nobody gets out now. Yeah, it's like basically nearly impossible. To yeah. Get out now, so right? it's basically like a witch trial, right? Yes. Because if you die, it means you were guilty. Right. <coughs> and so since but they make they're it gonna so make die. sure that you die. They make no sure what, you freaking so die. You're be guilty. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> or I guess technically, if they wanted to absolve somebody, yeah. right, um, they could say they sent them through there, and then they could just. Put them at the end and see them come out and be like, oh, Actually, see, that's true. Yevon blessed. Or give None them, of this give text them a life is jacket. in the game. I'm totally speculating. It's not, on this. but but I but, like what you're saying because this was my note. Wow, they are very bad at executions. <laughs> very bad. I'm like okay, and then I say, well, it's uh, path to purity. It's like baptism, but well, kind of. It's also not like baptism. <laughs> That, that, those were my notes for this whole part. <laughs> but that, but what you're saying yeah. helps me a little bit more because this this stretch of the game is the one that narratively makes the least sense for the, just this past hour that we've in played Bevel, here. Yeah. yeah, in Bevel. This whole part is like, hey, this is this is rough, right? Um, but your explanation helps me make more sense of the Via Purifico, yeah. um, more so than I had because all I was saying was like, this is so dumb. <laughs> this is so dumb. But I like that. I really like yeah. that because it, historically it makes sense. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, so there's a scene here where Micah, Seymour, and Keenock are kind of discussing the fact that the, the Ronso Maester Kelk is like, oh no. He's not happy about I can't Seymour. believe Seymour killed Driscoll. I don't know how to feel yeah, about this. Yeah. Right? And then they're kind of discussing, because Seymour wants to keep Yuno alive. Now, we're going to learn later the reason. The reason he wants to do that is because he wants to become Sin himself. So he wants Yuno. He needs a summoner. Just like um, Zeon with uh, Unileska, Unileska originally. Yeah, yeah. Zeon became Sin yeah. after that, right? Yes. And then obviously on the last time it was done with Braska, Jack became Jack. Sin. <coughs> so became sin. Yuna, he wants Yuna to get the final summoning so that so that um, Seymour can become Sin. That's his plan. So that's why he says Yuna could be of use if kept alive. But but <clears throat> Master Micah is like, no, no, you kill her. Yes. And Seymour's like, whatever you say, sir. Yeah. And then I love this because uh, Keenock is like, I'm coming too. And Seymour's like, why? why? <laughs> yeah. do, do you not trust me? Yeah. And Keenock's like, uh, do I not trust a man who just murdered his father? Yep, right. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> and so they go, and I love it because I really thought it was so surprising when yeah. Keenock shows up and he's, he's dead. dead. They're just holding his dead yeah. body. And it's like, eh, yeah, Keenock, I don't know what he was thinking yeah. he was going he to do. He thought he, he was being Yeah, just his careful, presence. Just not careful enough. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> yes, I don't trust you. you. And he knew he was up to something, but then but he just... then it's like, well, you shouldn't have gone with him. <laughs> should have had more backup yeah. or whatever. But, yep. so yeah, so he, Kenok goes with Seymour and Seymour obviously kills him in wherever they're traveling to where they're going to come out to the exit of the Via Perifica which is where the party finally kind of all comes together. I, we kind of skipped <clears throat> where we see, oh, oh, sorry. Because after that scene where they leave together, Keenock and Seymour, then the screen fades to black and you hear Isaru saying, Lady Yuna, forgive me. So he's gonna end up having to confront her. Um, I love the music mm. during this part. It's like a, a piano. Oh yeah. It's actually, I think they, in the original game, I can't remember what it was, but in this in the in this version, I think they're using the piano collections version. Oh of this yeah, song. it sounded like that. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> super cool. So, and you're kind of going through, and uh, uh, Oren ends up meeting up with uh, 
Yuna, and they're going together. And then you have the three water-based party members, um, Riku, Waka, and Riku, yeah. Titus, going through their part of it in the water. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and anyways, Yuna and Aran come across Isaru, and he, you know, calls them traitors and everything like that, which is interesting considering he was there when the Guado attacked the Albed. I know, yeah. <laughs> Maybe he He still, just can't, I don't know. Maybe he still sort of viewed his kidnapping as an Albed insurrection thing, right? Mm. And the Guado attack is being mm. justified. Yeah. And so he still doesn't have a problem with Yevon because he hasn't mm. seen that Seymour's unsent and all the things that we've seen, right? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. It seems like he just can't let go of it. Yeah, so, you know, you have a summoner battle with him. Uh, he actually ends up summoning Bahamut himself. So he, he's been into the temple of, at, at Bavel and gotten that mm -hmm. summon. Um, <clears throat> but you end up defeating him. Okay, now the party meets up again at the surface. They're all together. This is where Seymour comes out. And he's got Keenog, who is dead, like we were saying. Yeah, and just like holding him by the tuft of his neck. His <laughs> eyes are all rolled back. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Seymour says, I saved him. He was a man who craved power, and great power he had, but he feared losing it trembling at unseen enemies. He spent his days scheming petty schemes, chased by his mm. fears, never knowing rest. You see, now he has no worries. He has been granted sleep eternal. Death is a sweet slumber, all the pain of life gently swept away. Ah, yes, so you see, if all life were to end in spirit, all suffering would end, don't you see? Do you not agree? That, Yuna, is why I need you. Come, Lady Yuna, come with me to Xanarkand, the lost city of the dead. With death on our side, we will save Spira, and for this, I will take you, or uh, take from you your strength, Yuna, your life, and become the next sin. I will destroy Spira and save it. So and destroy it and save it. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, this so is a, a, a little bit of a trope or cliche where it's like the the, it's not used all the time, but it's kind of it's you see it commonly enough to where it's like, oh, there's too much suffering in the world, so we have to. End all suffering by yes. just killing everyone. And it's a, it's the a, a Nishin. The idea of killing everyone is not Nishin, but yeah. um, the problem itself is the is the the Nietzschean critique of life in general, yeah. right? Where it's like life is suffer. What does Nietzsche say? Life is to to live is to suffer, but to survive is to find meaning in the suffering. Yes. Right. But but it's all suffering, like right. top down. Yeah. The whole time. Yeah. And the only way to escape it is. Well, to die, but that's the nihilistic take. That's yeah. that's nihilism right there. Right. And the natural conclusion of a a nihilist who's gone all the way down that nihilism rabbit hole will come to the conclusion of oh, if if there was no more life, there would be no more suffering. Mm. And that is like it's true. Horrific. I, well, in in the worldview, yeah, it's totally it's true. true. But like, it it just totally ignores that it's not all. Is true. there something more valuable to life? Like, and what Nietzsche says, to, to survive is to find meaning in the suffering. Yes. It's like, suffering is always present, but that doesn't mean that that you, you can't, that there isn't other things there as well. Yeah, but it's also not in just life. all 100% suffering. Exactly, it's like, exactly. There's also joy. There's also yeah. like this myriad of freaking emotions in there. Yeah. And some of that stuff is pleasant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> so, I guess in the world of Spira, there would be more suffering than say. Yeah, the balance is a bit off. Yeah. yeah. So but even as we go through and we talk to people in all the villages, like, yeah, everyone's, like, freaked out all the time. But they're living life and yeah. having kids and making the best they of it. They play blitz ball. Doing, yeah, having fun, playing games and, and laughing. And, you know, there's still, there's still other things going on than just the suffering. The nihilistic angle is to only focus on, on the suffering. On that part, right. Yeah. Only that part. And, yeah, it is, it is a bit tropey. This is also around that time period where everyone was the 90s and into the 2000s, where everyone was looking at that. Well, Square Enix specifically was looking into all the the old philosophers and old, mm -hmm. you know, psychologists and people like Nietzsche who had come up with all these ideas and they're kind of trying to express them in games. Yeah. So it may just be a like a natural byproduct of its time. Yeah, it's kind of like all the games around that time were sort of like... And all the anime around that time too. That. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah, everything was kind of doing that a little. Um, <clears throat> so you end up fighting him. He goes into his like more powerful mode. Yeah, they called it um, ooh, not not N A T. What's it called? Seymour not Natus N A T U S. I think. Ah, uh, yeah. Which is um like to be born, mm. like natal, like natal, oh, yeah, natal, yeah. whatever N A T. Um, 
and so it's the reborn Seymour, right? Mm. So this is like his new body, quote, right? It's, it's, you know, he's passed through death and come back, and now he is in this new state. I looked at it for a bit. I looked at that weird, his hair turns into this crown and like this crazy yeah. thing behind him. I couldn't make heads or tails of it. But okay, but here's the biggest question. Why doesn't Eunice send him now? I know, because it doesn't take that long. It's like right? when you when you defeat For, to send one person just takes very little. We saw it with Jiskel. Yeah. Because I know. Yeah, yeah. Because okay, initially he turns into his like Nada Natus or Nata, whatever. Natus. Natus. Yeah, yeah. Natus. Natus. Seymour. Natus. Seymour. And like Kimari is like facing off because he yeah, tried to and he, stab like, him. Stabs him. Right? And so he's like holding him off while they run away. But then oh, this scene, this but then so they're just like, no, we can't leave Kimari behind. No, I, this is so funny. They they had already come to that conclusion. They're like, hey, we're fighting. But then Auron was like, run, get away now. Yeah. He's like really forceful about it. Yeah. So we run, and then we stop, and we're like, wait, why are we running? It was <laughs> yeah. a string. It was kind of a funny scene. It's like, no, don't leave Kimari. Behind. And then when we all come back, and even Auron is like, okay, let's go back. It was yeah. just kind of, it was a weird little moment. Yeah, there. it's I don't know. it's it, yeah. And the idea I, was, I oh, wherever Yuna goes, we'll follow her. So it's right. like, okay, great. Um, but then she comes back, and Kimari and, and um, Seymour. Seymour are no closer to fighting. <laughs> They're still just <laughs> looking at each other. And then we show up, and Kimor kind of like shakes his head. Yeah. And he's just like, all right. Um, but <coughs> he was going to be brave, but we took away his bravery, and now we all die. Yeah, but if. again, maybe it's a little foggy. I'm trying to remember. Um, it seems like it just cuts to black after you... you like, they defeat him again. Did his yeah. body come get picked? Like, the last time his body came yeah, got picked Yeah, they were up. like, don't touch him, and they moved him away. This time, no one was around him. Because remember, he, oh, this is an important thing to bring up. He absorbs the bodies of everyone around him. Yeah. He, like, for, he like takes them all into one. I actually took a nice note here. Um, Seymour cannibalizes his friends. He eats them. He cannibalizes them and uses their power. So... Yeah, so when you defeat no him... No one's right? around him to carry him away this time. It, there's nobody there. Nobody is there. And it just cuts to black, and then Titus has his little narration. It's just like they left. But it's like, why didn't they send... Why didn't they send him? Yeah, I remember this. Oh, yeah, yeah he's got the four. He kind of yeah, looks like he's a like, squid. He's like, oh, and he's like dying, and it cuts... It, it fades to... Oh, yeah, he's got his little robot dude. The little fades machine. Fades to black, and then Titus, like, narrates... Sorry, it goes to the... the Battle screen, yeah. The results screen. It cut, fades to black, and then Titus starts narrating. We escaped with our skins intact. Yeah. Why didn't yeah. she send him there? So this whole Bavel sequence. <laughs> I wonder if it was written by a specific scenario writer who wrote the Bavel part portion of the game because it's it's pretty short given the whole yeah. game. And I don't know. We don't ever really get to come back here, right? Yeah. It's like it doesn't so, show the conclusion to this sequence. Like how they got out. It just fades it to black and it's like, we escaped. You can make some assumptions. Oh, we didn't have time. Here comes sure. all the military people. Sure. I would have liked to see that. That would have been nice because, yeah. The whole, it, the Yuna's it, whole reason, the only point, well, other than the the Bahamut summon, other than that, the only reason we're in Bavel is to send Seymour. Send because Seymour. Yuna was like, I have to. I am willing to literally marry somebody in order to send them. I am going to do this. Like this is her purpose. Yeah. And, and, and she apparently had the opportunity and didn't do it. So, yeah, I'd, I'd be curious to know exactly why. So it would have been nice to just have, like, one more scene there where it's like, oh, he falls over and his body slumped, and I'm going to send him now. And then a bunch of people come running in, more warrior monks or something. It's like, oh, we don't have time. Get out now while we have a chance. Sure. We can't get imprisoned again. Something like that. Would have been nice to see. Would have been nice. Because otherwise it just leaves me going, like, wait, what happened? Like, why didn't they send him? Anyway. <clears throat> But the narration there is, we escaped with our skins intact, but Yuna lost something. Yes. I could already tell her faith was shaken. shaken. Yevon had betrayed her. Mm -hmm. I felt like I should. Uh, I felt like I should do or say something, uh, anything, but nothing came. I was just yeah. uh, as lost as she was. And then, so now they're back in Makalani Woods. Yes. Yeah, so they've escaped. Uh, the party's really worried about her. You know, I have to say one more thing, though. The Bavel sequence, when I first played this game, was probably my favorite sequence oh, in the really? whole game. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was really, really... Well, maybe not the whole game, because that intro was super killer. Yeah. But, like, it, I, I didn't have the issues that I had with it that I did this, this time, time, where I'm being way more analytical and really trying to, like, figure the story out from an analytic point of view. And, um... Uh, I don't know. I... 
I just had missed a lot. And I, I feel like maybe if you're just in the flow of the game, it's so cool that you yeah. could easily just overlook this stuff and right. not not think that it's that big of a deal. Yeah. Um, but we're not just overlooking things in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we, I mean, we've overlooked some things, right? Like you know, bits of dialogue and some uh, things in the game where you know you have to do certain things, like missable scenes oh, and stuff. Sure. Like, yeah. okay, we we may have missed a few things, but um, we're analyzing the story, so we yeah. kind of got to point that stuff out. Okay, so uh, they're back in oh, Lockland. One more thing. One oh, more thing. Sorry. Yeah. One more thing. See more staff. See more staff. Oh, right, right. It's that red yeah. staff. It actually looks like Bavel, right? Oh, but like the y- layout of the city. Yes, the layout of the city. It's kind of like an upside downish kind of thing there. Um, but dude, that staff is super cool. So it's the symbol of Yevon, but it's missing something huge. There's two differences, right? So you've got the eye in the middle, but it has like horns coming mm. out to the side. It's got the Pyrefly symbol all throughout it. Everything looks kind of like, just in Bavel, you see that design around um, a lot, which is very indicative of the fact that the people who run the city are dead. But um, anyways, his uh, staff has that Pyrefly, you know, symbology all around it, and it's beautiful. But the Yevon symbol is the eye with the wings on the side. Now I'm gonna call them wings just for interpretation's sake, it's not official. They, nobody's said what this means, but it seems like there's wings on the side and then a person in the middle that represents everybody and that Yevon is kind of like holding the people and protecting them, encircling uh, them about with its wings, yeah, right? Yeah. It's wings of protection. And then it's the it's the great all-seeing eye above mm. it, right? Don't question it. The yeah. eye knows what's up. Yeah. You don't question the eye. It's here to protect you. That's what that symbol means. Gotcha. But in Seymour's staff, he's holding an eye with horns, what look like horns, mm. and then wings that are open and no person mm. underneath. Mm. Unless he holds it above himself, he's the person, I guess. But I, I don't. I think what it's saying is that um, the wings are now open. The Yevon that was serving to protect the people is now flying on its own, doing its own thing, and has left the people behind. It is no yeah. longer, and because his his he's personal purpose that. is to kill these people. Yeah. He's going to kill everybody. He's going to so open he's the like, wings of Yevon. Open kill the them. wings. <clears throat> yep. And so the wings, so now, anyways, oh, it's crazy. So you, he's holding his staff with the wings open as if it's like, and it's a devil, it's like it's now in attack mode, right? Mm. The the symbol of Yevon is now in attack mode, and, and the people are no longer a consideration. Nice. So that's what that staff means. That's crazy. And it's red, too, that's which awesome. is really, really cool. I didn't even look at his staff, so. Well, they, they showed it for like a few seconds, and yeah. I was like, I just had to like, just like stop and just like Take a look at it. Because <laughs> they, they showed it on purpose. I'm, I, I know that that's, yeah. they were trying to say something, right? So with that, you get essentially what was the angel of protection, a guardian mm. angel with the wings, mm. right? And as it spreads the wings and the people are no longer consideration, it has horns, it is now the angel of death. Gotcha. So his, por- his purpose now is to be the angel of death. That's awesome. So they're, they're back in Makalani Woods. The party is concerned about Yuna. She's lost. She doesn't know what to do now. Yeah. Um, Titus decides he's going to go to her. She's kind of yep. standing in the middle of this pool of water. And it kind of looks like the place from um, where Earlier. we got the orb from right. uh, the Jack Sphere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Similar it's like around that area. Looking area, yeah. yeah. Um, Titus then reveals that he knows everything about the Summoner's Pilgrimage and the fact that she's supposed to die. Ah, she now. didn't know that he knew. That's yeah. right, because she wasn't there. It was nope. Riku who told us. Yeah. And she's like, oh, you know now, right? And so, yeah, so she apologizes. To, well, he tries to apologize to her for saying yes, all yeah, the yeah. things he said about you know, coming back after sin and everything yeah, without yeah, yeah. knowing. And, um, you know, she says, oh, that it, it didn't make her sad. It actually made her happy to hear those yeah, things. Yeah, those were like her favorite parts of the journey. Right. And, yeah. you know, given that so many times she, she's telling people to smile despite mm-hmm. what they know is coming. Like, yeah. that's essentially what Titus was doing. He just didn't realize that he was doing that. <laughs> Talking yes. as if there's a happy ending to this. Yes. Keeping joy yeah, yeah. in the journey kind of thing, right? Even if it's not real. In the suffering, she's kind of got the opposite outlook of Seymour, where yeah. Seymour sees only the suffering and wants to end it. She is looking past the suffering and seeing all the everything else, right? And the wants to keep that. It. Yeah. Um. So Titus then I think tries to tell her just not to do it, like just <laughs> yeah, forget it. Just don't be a summer anymore. Just and she's actually life. open to it. Yeah, she really she's seriously like, considers I? it. Yeah, yeah. Because Donna did that, mm-hmm. and it's just like, and uh, who we meet him in, in a little bit, but Zook. Yeah, the yeah. The previous yeah. summoner that um, yep. he's just Maka a monk now. and uh, Lulu had yeah. guarded. He did that. Yep. So it's not like just it's unprecedented, the pilgrimage. Right? I would say most of the summoners abandoned the pilgrimage. Probably, yeah. 
So yeah. then he suggests, oh, let's just go back to my spirit. You know, we'll fly there. <laughs> a big party at my place. He's a big says. party at my place. I love that. <laughs> She's like, can we watch Blitzball? He's like, heck yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah dude. It's like, can we go I'm out to eat afterwards? Oh, yeah. Even at night? Yeah, the city never sleeps. Yeah. You know, it's always awake. And, and then she's he just like loving it. Well, she symbolizing the night, at right. least in general, right. is it, it, it seems like a place for her. Yeah. Where, a place where a city doesn't sleep. It's alive even at night. You know? Yes. That's her kind of thing. And then he talks about the sunrise, though. You know, like going yes. and watching the sunrise. Let's go to the yeah. sea before the sunrise. The city lights go out one by one. one the by stars one. fade. Then the horizon glows almost like it's on fire. It's kind of rose colored, right? First in the sea, then it spreads to the sky, then to the whole city. It gets brighter and brighter till everything glows. It's really pretty. I know you'd like it. I have a question about that real quick, though, because this is beautiful. I don't mean to interrupt. Yes. <laughs> but why does the sea glow before the sky? Good question. No, I have a, an idea here, but... Okay. Well, want to hold off for, we're for going now. to talk about it later. But <laughs> it's interesting to know that the, the water glows before the sky, so... Mm. Um, and then <clears throat> she says in response to that, I'd like to see it someday. And he says, well, you know, we can both go, you know. And that's when she starts crying. Like you actually see a tear fall into yes. the water and yeah, sort yeah. of splash, right? And she's just like, I can't, I just can't, I can't go. She cannot give up the pilgrimage. She just, yeah. she realizes she can't do it. Um, this is where Titus kisses her. And then there's this kind of sort of abstract romantic sequence where they're almost sort of floating through this yeah. ethereal glowing... Uh, yeah, I don't know what you call it. <laughs> Almost like stream. <laughs> Ethereal, ether. Yeah, just like a, yeah. Representing their, you know, uh, first kind of like real intimate moment. Yeah. Now, I almost didn't want to talk about this. I made a note and wasn't decided on whether I was going to talk about this or not. Yeah. I think a lot of people assume that they like have sex here. I don't see it that way like at all <laughs> like it could I really be don't. but they really they, it's very very abstract and yes. so i mean who freaking knows they could have they could have been they could have spent a week frolicking in the meadows for all we sure. know it's it's just really abstract I, I think it's meant to represent like a connection like a soulful connection oh sure um that like through this whole journey like they've been the ones sort of supporting each other at their lowest points this is now mm -hmm. Yuna's lowest point, and yep, he's yep, helping yep. her, and, and she was doing that for him earlier on. And they've done that enough, they have like total trust in each other. And mm -hmm. you know, they've, they're sharing this kiss, and that's what it feels like. Like that kiss feels like okay, this little sure. ethereal sort of abstract. A whole new world. You know, yeah. fireworks sort of euphoric feeling. Right. Um, I because, like that, I like people, that interpretation. Because like people it. also do this with FF7 in the scene where, um, uh, Cloud sends everybody back before the end of the game and says, "Go I, find your purpose to fight." But there's one, and yeah. then and then he it's and Tifa, Tifa sit yeah. outside of the airship, Until and the she morning. falls asleep on his shoulder, yeah, yeah. and it fades, and then it, they come up, and she's in the same position. Everyone also says, "Like, oh, they, you know, they had sex there." And I was like, "No, they didn't." <laughs> No, they fetching did it. She fell asleep on his arm, and <laughs> time passed, and she's in the same position. What are you talking about? It's just, people just like, <coughs> I think it's also part of like shipping culture. People just want the characters to get together so bad. But, uh, and that yeah. would also be a, maybe more of a Western sure. thing. I know in Japan, intimacy, I, it's, it's, I don't know, it's just different. Yeah. It's, it's quite different, and especially yeah. the public display of intimacy yeah. is... Um, you know, not so much of a They're not of a that thing. far away from the rest of the party who could come walking up at any <laughs> second, dude. That's They're not true. having sex, okay? That's true. They're not. Especially knowing that Kimari never lets her out of his sight. And he know? was watching them, as we yeah, see yeah, yeah. a few seconds later. I think if they were... Anyways, I, that's yeah. not what happened. I, it, I refuse if, to believe that. If, <laughs> if in your head canon that makes you feel better, that's fine. But I, I more or less interpret it the same way as you. <laughs> yeah. um, she does seem to have... It does seem as though there was some type of of cathartic release, forgive my, <laughs> 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 forgive <Sure>. my language, <laughs> but it does seem like there was something that, it, that changed her outlook that could have, the, the reason I would assume that maybe it could have been something like that would yeah. be because of how she acts afterwards. Like yes. she's just way more, you know, open and, and accepting and happier and just like, you know, yeah. it seems as though she had a, a, a release of sorts. I, but that can I happen agree. in a cathartic way. That can, or an emotional it, that way. can happen in an emotional way. Yes. That can happen through having a good cry. That It doesn't yes. have to be that, you know. Yes. So anyways, 
I don't, I don't buy that. Um, so anyways, yeah, but you do see that they're kind of sitting there by the shore of that little pond of water. Mm -hmm. And Kimari is watching them and he yeah. seems happy. He does his like scary Kimari smile. <laughs> the growl. Yeah, yeah. And then he walks away. He yeah. like goes back. Um, so then she's saying, I'll continue. I must. If I give up now, um, I can do anything I want. Oh, if I give up now, I could do anything I wanted to. And mm -hmm. yet, even if I was with you, I could never forget. So if she were to walk away from it, she, she wouldn't She'd be regret able it. to. She knew she would regret it. Yeah. She can't walk away from this at yeah. this point. She's too committed. And Titus kind of, once she puts it that way or once yeah. she makes her decision, he doesn't try to talk her out of it. Right. He's like, all right, I'll be there with you then. Right. And immediately, I'll go yeah. with you. I'm your guardian. Yep. Unless I'm fired. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I'm fired. I love, I love him then. He's, he's great. He's great. I um, like him a lot. And then, she's, and then she says, stay with me to the end, please. And he says, not to, until the end, always. And that was what Auron told always. him, right? Yes, always that's be right. With yeah, her. Yeah. Oh, and then good. she says, yeah. always then. Um, actually, this is where it's shown that Kimari's watching them and walks away. Mm. And then uh, she suggests that Titus go back first, almost to not be seen coming back together. It's almost yes. like they don't want to yes. public. They don't want anyone to know that. that. Yeah. But she goes back on that after a second. So he's like, okay, fine. She whistles. She whistles. Yep. And then she comes running up. No. Yeah. And she takes his hand. She grabs his hand. And they go together. So they're, yeah. they're okay with letting people know that they're together now. I like That's that. the whole thing. Like after she was able to get over this initial trauma and, um, you know, have this, this romantic moment with Titus, she really just blossoms as a person, yes. you know, mm -hmm. and she's able to not feel so held back and not feel like there's this, you know, this thing hanging over her head, this, this massive expectation. She, basically, nobody expects her to, to vanquish sin at this point. No. Zero. She is a traitor. She's excommunicated. <laughs> they are trying to kill her now. It's like, you know what? Load off my mind. I don't have to worry about being little Miss Perfect anymore. And right. I can just kind of live a life and, and, you know, be, I don't have to be an idol, you know, who yeah. doesn't have a boyfriend. It's like, I can, <laughs> I can just have a boyfriend. I can just be a normal person yes. for at least the, the next little while. For the, for the next stretch, the yeah. last stretch of the journey. Right? So I like that a lot. Yeah. She definitely, you know, she's it's a different a great, person. It's a great moment. It's a great sequence. Um, yeah. I think all the character payoffs are really coming together. Um, yeah. Just good scene. Um, the song <laughs> Suteki Dane is not in English, is it? No, it's I think the, it's in Japanese. It's still in Japanese. Good. Okay, good. Mm. It's a good song. I like it a lot. It's um, really good. Uh, the love scene, I know, it was made multiple times. That They actually, the developers had a really hard time getting this particular scene right. Mm. And um, the Wikipedia article actually says that... Um, they were having such a hard time with this scene that they brought in their female staff to like tell them what they could do differently to make mm. it more believable. Mm -hmm. And honestly, PS2, this is early PS2, very first 3D, not first 3D, first immersive 3D game yeah. that they had really made at this point. And like romantic scenes <laughs> in video games, even today, even now, they're really, I don't think they're that great. They're, yeah. It's very different. Like Mass Effect, we talked about that in our mm -hmm. last podcast. It's, it's, it's awkward when you're doing this kind of stuff. And that was 10 years later, you know? So at this point, I could see them really having <laughs> trouble with this and being like, this looks so stupid. Um, I've been on the record in the past in other uh, series that we've done on this yeah. podcast of saying that um, I'm not a fan of any of the Final Fantasy romances. Oh, yeah. Thinking that none of them were really handled that well. No. And I'm, I'm kind of turning around on this one. Yeah. I actually think it's pretty good. I think this is pretty good in part because it wasn't necessarily even really a focus. Yeah. Like, I don't think, I don't play through this game. Like, I played, playing through something like FF8, and it's yeah. like, you know, Squall and uh, Renoa, it, it's clear that there's some, the, the tension is always there. Mm -hmm. In this game, the tension's not necessarily always there. Mm -hmm. It's actually very much so a background issue. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes it better. Because when they do address it, and you do have these moments, it, it, it's not so much at the forefront, where it's like, oh man, this girl, I got this one girl, but I like this other girl, or I don't know what to do, the girls, girls are crazy, I don't understand them kind of yeah. thing. But instead, it's just like this less, high school moment and more just like authentic. Yeah. The authenticity of Yuna and Titus is really is really touching for me. And yeah, I think it's really good. I think it's really done. Really yeah, well. I I feel like the whole thing has ebbed and flowed in a way that feels really convincing. Yeah. Like moment to moment. So it's I like, feel like if they forced it a little more it would be worse. Yeah. It would have been worse. They have genuine moments where they're just, you know, helping each other out. Yeah. Getting to know each other. I mean clearly there's an attraction early on. Yes, but like, of course. They're they're always refocused onto the pilgrimage. This is more yes. important. This is more important. 
But there's like moments where she'll come to like, you know, cheer him up or help him out and, or vice versa. And then, and then for a while he's like, oh, she's going to go marry this Seymour guy. I guess I got to let this thing go now. Yeah. And it's like, okay, but then I, I can be okay with that because, you know, I, it probably wouldn't work out anyway. This is the sort of thing that happens when you're like getting to know somebody and you yeah, don't yeah, know sure. whether or not it's like whether you should make your move or not. Or <laughs> yeah, what do they really think or feel, you know, yeah. and you kind of go back and forth on it. And it's like, okay, maybe not. Oh, I don't know. I feel this way. Uh. Anyways, it's done this through the whole game up to this moment, and I just feel like it really worked. So. Really? Yeah, very much so. <clears throat> so, good stuff. Yep. Um, I, feel okay. like, I feel like if it was more up at, at front and center in the story, it, it would have not been as good. Yeah. So this is where we're going to stop uh, when you arrive at the Calm Lands here. I, I took a few notes, but we'll just go through a couple of them. Okay. Um, just to describe what the Calm Lands even are. Um, oh, yeah, because Machen is right there. Yeah. So Lulu initially says they kind of come out over this, these just wide open plains. Um, seeing this here about this point in the game too, as far as like where we're at in terms of our getting closer to completion of the game, you can really see again the parallels between the structure of this game and Final Fantasy XIII when mm. they come from Cocoon down to Pulse, which is very much an open, wide, oh, plains, yeah. green sort yeah, of the area. And the game yeah. opens up for the first time, and it's not just walking down hallways. Yeah. And you can go do all of your side questing and things there in Pulse. Uh, the Calm Lands is basically the pulse of mm. Final Fantasy X. It's, the game opens up a little bit here. It's a massive field. Yeah, huge. And you can do a lot of side stuff here. There's like yeah, that there's whole monster battling thing. Yeah. Um, anyways, there's a lot of little things you can do, uh, mini games and things there's like that. There's chocobos, you can <clears> ride them around. Yep. Because the area is so big, actually. This is right. where chocobos are actually more useful. So, anyway, very similar. Again, if you're breaking down, if you're, if you're looking at the people behind the scenes, people who made the game, and the way that they approach making games, mm. you've got uh, Yoshinori Kitase, you've got Motomo Toriyama, yeah, these types Tetsuya of people, and, Nomura, yeah. and if you look at the games that they work on, you'll see very similar game design philosophy and structure. Ah, yeah. And so, coming into the Calmlands feels very much like the coming into Pulse of Final Fantasy XIII, right? Cool. Um, <clears throat> anyway, Lulu describes the Calmlands long ago. The High Summoners fought sin here. The road ends here. Beyond, there are no towns, no villages, only endless plains. And then Aaron says, many summoners stray from their path and lose their way here. That's what you were talking about. Yeah, right? yeah. And then Yuna kind of lays back in the grass. And she says, I've always known where to go. And Tita says, I won't let you die. I'll find a way somehow. So he's still determined, just like he promised to Sid, we're going to go through with the pilgrimage, but I'm not going to let her die. Yeah. I told Yuna I would find a way. I guess I wanted to believe that words could make it come true. Um, so he doesn't know how. He's just determined to find a way, but he, he's just, he's not sure. <laughs> yeah. Then Machen's right there, like you were saying. And so he goes on to explain. As you know, these plains were once a battlefield, a great battle between Bavel and Xanarkand, a melee of Machina. That war left this place a barren, lifeless land. Then time passed. The summoners took note of this uninhabited land. Great battles could be fought here with no harm to common folk. Mm. Perfect for the final battle with sin, as it were. Summoners wait here, ready to perform the final summoning, uh, to know what they must feel. In any case, when Sin is defeated here, the Calm will visit Spira once more. That's why this place is known as the Calm Lands. Exactly yeah. who dubbed it is uh, who dubbed it so is unknown, and that, as they say, is that. So this is essentially the place where they come to fight Sin in the final battle, or at least it traditionally was. Mm. Um, so you go to Xanarkin, you get the final Aeon, and then they would come to the Calm Lands and they would do their final battle with Sin there. Um, <clears throat> so that's why it's called the Calm Lands. Okay. Um, and that's where we're going to leave off for today. Next time we'll pick up here, move towards Gagazette. Actually, there's some stuff that happens before that too, but we'll head in that direction to meet the Ronzo people. Thanks for watching, everybody. Appreciate you. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. Peace, Peace out.